Okay, so I want to talk here about um, basically the three different types of spectra that we encounter when doing, you know, whether it's astronomy or working in a lab or whatever. And um, th there's one more I'm not going to talk about. And just for the record, that's that's just reflection spectra. You shine light on something, it reflects off. That's the dumb one. That's the, the trivial one. Whatever light that that object is looking like is the light that's reflected. And by the way, that's why my shirt looks brown. It's taking in, so I have a, a full spectrum LED light above me. And so it's emitting basically at all wavelengths. Those, actually, you know what? Let's just do it, Dan. Four types of spectrum. <laughs> uh, we have number one, a reflection spectrum. Reflection spectrum. Because honestly, this is the one that you deal with the most in everyday life. Um, the, the other three are somewhat, actually significantly rare in everyday life. So a reflection spectra is simply when you have, um, uh, let's do it like this. Imagine that you have some light that's emitting all three, red, green, and blue, and or everything between, but I'll just use the primary colors. And you have some random object. Wow, there. And then here is your eye. You're, you're looking at this from, from this angle here. So you have some light that's incident on that object. So for example, a light bulb. The light from that light bulb hits it. Isn't that cool? And let's say this particular object absorbs primarily green and, and blue light, but it has the tendency to reflect red light. So for example, this thing right, right there, that's what it will look like. So what happens is those green wavelengths and the blue wavelengths get absorbed by it. And it accepts the energy from the green photons. It accepts the energy from the blue photons. But the red photons, for whatever reason, it comes down to the quantum structure of whatever coats the surface of this, in fact. But for whatever reason, the red wavelengths don't get absorbed. They instead get reflected. So you, as viewing only the light that reflects off this object, will see this as red. Now, it does not mean this object is relatively cool compared to like blue or green objects. It just simply means that this thing reflects red light and that's what you see this. Now, um, I chose a very poor color of shirt to wear for this because it turns out brown is not actually color. There's a great, I think it's a Veritasium uh, video about like why, why brown doesn't exist. No, it's not Veritasium, it's some other uh, cool uh, YouTube channel. But um, check that out. Uh, if it, any other color probably would have worked for this, but um, it, there are various combinations. So I have like a, a navy blue blazer here. What this does is it, it actually absorbs the vast majority of all wavelengths, including blue. But the reason why it looks just a tad blue if you get close enough I mean, it looks like black, but the reason why it looks like tad blue to me is that it reflects just a little bit of blue wavelengths. But if you have an object that absorbs 100% of all wavelengths, at least in the visible spectrum, if you have an object that absorbs 100% of all wavelengths, that's what, we, what our eyes perceive to be nothing. And the way that our eyes encode the nothing signal is black. So that's what it means to be a black object, simply that whatever that object that appears black to our eyes is black because it's not reflecting any wavelengths. It reflected, if it reflected even a small range of wavelengths but in the visible spectrum, then we would see as whatever wavelengths that was. And of course, the other option here is that let's say this object emits all of the light that incident, that, that's incident on it. So all three of those primary colors and everything in between are all reflected. And that means that as the light is incoming here, it all gets reflected. And so your eyes see whatever exactly the same light that was shining on it. Now, I don't want to say white because it's possible that the incident light might have only been red in the first place. So whatever light shines off of that in that case there, is only light that hit in the first place. And I had this come up last weekend. I was out observing and um, I have a, one of my telescopes is white, but I had a kind of a red headlamp and I kept looking up and seeing this big red telescope in front of me, but until I realized, no, that's the color of my headlamp that's reflecting off of that telescope. So in that case there though, if there's only one color of, of primary, one primary color, whatever one wavelength incident, that and only that wavelength will be what you see. But adding those others back in, if all wavelengths are incident on it, and you can see what's coming here. If all wavelengths are incident, that is what we perceive as white. 
which it's a little bit tough to find a white marker on a whiteboard, but yeah. So that's what a reflection spectra is. Really, we see it as whatever color is incident on that minus the wavelengths that the object absorbs. And I'll write like that. Perceived equals incident minus absorbed. Now, this is not a precise mathematical nor physical statement. Uh, well, it's not a precise mathematical statement. It's a, it's a good physicist uh, statement, meaning that generically, whatever we want to call perceived as is generically that minus that. I, I hope that makes sense. So, and again, this is what we perceive in most common in everyday situations. Now, that's not to say that's the only thing we observe, but most objects, at least we can say that most objects that aren't emitting their own light is what we see here. Okay, so number two. And we've already covered this. This is a black body spectrum. Uh, you know what? I'm going to revise that a tad. Um, a black body spectrum is actually a specific subclass of a more general one, which I should be working with. So let's call this a continuous spectrum. And to be entirely honest, this is actually one of the, the least common ones that we observe in, in nature because, as it turns out for various reasons, there are reasons why we typically won't see all of, well, I'll get to that. Um, what this means, though, is that, you know, if you take that, that spectrograph that I was kind of outlining earlier and you sample all wavelengths, at least in, in a given range, whether it's the visible part of the spectrum or, I, or IR or whatever, um, essentially what this means is that just as generically as we can get, this object emits light at every sampleable wavelength. So obviously, you know, if you're mainly concerned about what the infrared, sorry, what the infrared spectrum is, you could care less about what ultraviolet light it's emitting, you know. So we can say that it's continuous within the IR band pass or something like that, or it's continuous within the G filter or whatever. Uh, that's a that's one type of optical filter. Um, okay, so for example, this spectrum might look like, so if again, the, the uh, units here are wavelength versus the intensity or the amount of, of light captured per square, square meter, uh, it might look something like this. It, that's a dumb thing, but it's, it's possible. You might have it, eh, actually, I can't quite go back on itself. Uh, it's, a, it's a single valued function, but, um, so this describes so an object that no matter what wavelength you look at, you're going to see an intensity above zero. Now, this is not something we're going to see. It, it, it's not something that you could easily like identify what color it might be. But another example of this, which we are much more familiar with, is something that looks like this. Notice here that no matter where you sample it, we have a non-zero amount of photons. But more importantly, we have a max. So this is exactly what a black body spectrum is. So a black body spectrum is one example of a continuous spectrum. And it's by far the most important. Because if you have a black body spectrum, what you can directly measure is the temperature. And this is the most important thing when you have a black body spectrum. And by the way, at least in the world of astronomy and, and lab physics, it's really rare that you're going to encounter a continuous spectrum that's not a black body spectrum, or at least that wasn't originally a black body spectrum. And I'll give you one example of that. When we look at our sun, um, our sun, the, the, the wavelengths that we see from our sun actually don't quite obey a black body spectrum, which is kind of unexpected. If we measure our sun, what we're going to see is, is a spectrum that kind of looks like this. It's kind of jig-jaggy, and then it goes down like that more sharply than it should. Now, an ideal black body spectrum would look more like this. I'll call you green. An ideal black body spectrum would look more like this. So notice that quite a bit of chunks of the blue and a little bit of green wavelengths are missing from our sun's spectrum that really should be there. Turns out, actually, our sun outputs exactly enough uh, blue and green wavelengths 
to perfectly mimic, uh, mimic a black body spectrum at about 5778 Kelvin. So the, sun, the light that's given off by our sun originally is perfectly black body. Now there's two reasons why we don't observe it as such. Any guess why that is? So number one, these little dips here are from specific elements that we'll get into here in a second, but the little dips or the jig jigginess of it is because our sun actually absorbs some of its own light before it lets it leave. In our sun's outer atmosphere, as the light that's produced, well, by the way, the light that's produced in our sun comes from actually a little bit below the surface. And as that, where, where the sun is denser and it behaves more like a solid, or, or at least in these terms, optically opaque is what we say. So you go a little bit below the surface, that's where the, the black body radiation is given off in a perfectly smooth uh, fashion. And then as that radiation passes through our sun's outer atmosphere, that's where some of these wavelengths of light are eaten away. So for example, there's very precise wavelengths depending on the hydrogen gas that's in our sun's outer atmosphere, the helium gas, the sodium, the iron even, all of these elements that we do find in our sun's outer atmosphere will we'll, we'll make a little bit of a gap there. And that's why we see these little jig jaggy things literally from the sun's atmosphere itself. And that's really important, we'll come back to that. The bigger effect of this though, is that most of the light that's lost from our sun comes from our sky. And or more specifically, our, our atmosphere. That our atmosphere has a tendency to more or less allow red wavelengths and orange and yellow through, but it has a tendency to absorb or scatter blue light specifically. I just explained three really cool things there. 